Hymns to Him. The hymns are an incredible blessing from God. I believe that they are a bridge between the heaven and the earth. I also believe the hymn book is a fifth book of scripture. The hymns are scripture set to music and they have the power to seal those words into our very being and keep us connected to the spirit so that we can receive revelation from God to fulfill the mission that he has called us to accomplish. Today I would like to discuss hymn 180, Father in Heaven We Do Believe. This is a beautiful hymn that teaches us in a very powerful way the doctrine of Christ. incredibly beautiful hymn that teaches in a very powerful way the doctrine of Christ. This hymn was written by Parley P. Pratt who lived from 1807 to 1857 and the music was written by Jane Romney Crawford who lived from 1883 to 1956. The scriptures that are uh, cited or that have been referenced uh, in this hymn are 3 Nephi chapter 12, verse 19, 
and 3 Nephi chapter 18, verses 7 and 11. Um, as I have gone through this hymn, uh, there are more scriptures that, um, we, that I cite uh, that really bring out what is being taught in this hymn and uh, that correlate with the doctrine of Christ. So as we look at these first two verses, um, again, it teaches in a very powerful way the doctrine of Christ. And we know that the doctrine of Christ is the way to Christ. It is the path that leads us to Christ. And Jesus Christ himself said in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So if we are to inherit the kingdom of God, there is no other name under heaven except the name of Jesus Christ where we can find salvation. Um, as we look at this first verse, and we look at that first line, it says, Father in heaven, we do believe. And so we are expressing our faith in the plan of salvation of our Lord and Savior. And we understand that it is only through that plan of salvation that we can find redemption. And so when we read that second line, it says, the promise thou hast made. What is the promise that our Heavenly Father has made to us in the plan of salvation. The promise that he has made is that he will provide a savior for us who will atone for the sins of all mankind. And it is only through that atonement that we will be able to overcome sin and death and that we will be able to become more like them as we repent of our sins and come unto our savior, Jesus Christ. I love what uh, Alma teaches in Alma 34, verses 8 through 10. It says, And now, behold, I will testify unto you of myself that these things are true. Behold, I say unto you that I do know that Christ shall come among the children of men to take upon him the transgressions of his people, and that he shall atone for the sins of the world, for the Lord God hath spoken it. For it is expedient that an atonement should be made for according to the great plan of the eternal God, there must be an atonement made, or else all mankind must unavoidably perish. Yea, all are fallen, all are hardened, and are lost, and must perish, except it be through the atonement which is expedient should be made. For it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice, not a sacrifice of man, neither of beast, neither of any manner of fowl, for it shall not be a human sacrifice, but it must be an infinite and eternal sacrifice. And so the promise that the Father has made is that he will provide a Savior for us. The third line says, Thy word with meekness we receive. What is the word? We know that the word is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as we receive him with meekness, we are able to apply the atoning blood of Christ on our behalf and receive forgiveness of our sins and to be sanctified and purified and that we might be able to ascend and become more like our Savior and our Father in heaven. And then the last line is just a statement of our faith, just as the saints have said. And so we recognize that the plan of salvation that our Heavenly Father provides for us is something that we have a testimony of and we know with the surety that through the atoning blood of Christ, we have the ability to return to live with our Father in heaven and our Savior Jesus Christ. Verse two, we now repent of all our sin. When we recognize our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when we have faith in him, we recognize that we are not like him. We recognize that we fall short of the full measure and stature and glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And because of that, we recognize that we have to change to become like him. And so that process of change is called repentance. And so as we repent of our sin, we are sanctified and purified and made holy. In 1 Nephi 22, 28, it says, but behold, all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people shall dwell safely in the Holy One of Israel, if it so be that they will repent. So we find safety and we find peace in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if we will but repent of our sins. Line two, it says, and come with broken heart, and I will add, 
and a contrite spirit. And as we do this, we again will be able to receive the covenant and choose the better part. And so we have a choice. We can remain in sin or we can come to the Lord with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, enter into a covenant with him, choose the better part, the part that provides peace and joy and love and eternal life, or choose death uh, by remaining in our sins. In verse 3, uh, the first line says, O Lord, accept us while we pray. We understand how important prayer is because prayer is the way that we communicate with our Heavenly Father. It is the way that we are able to ask for forgiveness and receive forgiveness of our sins. And 2 Nephi 32, 9 talks about the importance of prayer. It says, But behold, I say unto you that you must pray always and not faint, that ye must not perform anything unto the Lord, save in the first place ye shall pray unto the Father in the name of Christ, that he shall consecrate thy performance unto thee, that thy performance may be for the welfare of thy soul. So we understand how important it is to pray always, to always have a prayer in our heart, always be seeking the spirit and the guidance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as we do this, we can receive forgiveness of our sins and then we enter into a new life and we can live. We who are sinners, we can live through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I love those last three lines. And all our sins forgive, new life impart to us this day, and bid the sinners live. In verse 4, uh, it says, humbly we take the sacrament. As we look at that word sacrament, as we break it apart, the first part is sacra and the, and the second part is meant. Sacra means holy and meant is way. So as we humbly take the sacrament, we enter into the holy way. We renew our covenant that we have made with the Lord and we enter into that holy way in Jesus' blessed name. And through that covenant, if we are prepared and we are humble and meek, we can receive a baptism of fire as we partake of the sacrament that will further sanctify us and purify us and help us to ascend to another level of sanctification and purity so that the Lord can guide us and direct us in our life. One of the things that the Lord taught me looking at these two verses is that sin, uh, S-I-N, signifies self-indulgent nature. So as we seek to find indulgence in the things of the world, we are not able to receive the blessings that Heavenly Father has for us. But as we repent and receive forgiveness, we are able to enter into that new life and receive the blessings that our Father in Heaven has for us. So that's why it's so important to understand what sin is and to repent and receive forgiveness of our sins. Verse 5, uh, if I were to reorder this hymn, I would probably put this verse a few verses earlier, but it's fine. It just, it works. Um, but verse 5 is talking about the ordinance of baptism of water. And so it says in that first line, we will be buried in this stream in Jesus' blessed, blessed name. And so as we receive the ordinance of baptism by water, it is a outward example of a commitment that we have made to leave our former life behind as we are buried in the water. And then as we come up out of the water, we are resurrected into a new life in our Jesus, our Savior's uh, blessed name. And so it is a way for us to show him that we are committed to following him and doing what he asks us to do. And uh, that third line and fourth line says, And rise while light shall on us beam the Spirit's heavenly flame. If we are prepared when we receive the baptism of water, we can also, after that ordinance is performed, receive the baptism of fire and the Holy Ghost. And 
as the Savior set the example for us, we can likewise receive that blessing if we are prepared. In uh, 2 Nephi 31, verses 5 to 9, uh, the Lord gives us the example that we should follow. It says, And now if the Lamb of God, he being holy, should have need to be baptized by water to fulfill all righteousness, oh, then how much more need have we, being unholy, to be baptized, yea, even by water? And now I would ask you, my beloved brethren, wherein the Lamb of God did fulfill all righteousness in being baptized by water. Know ye not that he was holy? But notwithstanding he being holy, he showeth unto the children of men that according to the flesh he humbleth himself before the Father and witnesseth unto the Father that he would be obedient unto him in keeping his commandments. Wherefore, after he was baptized with water, the Holy Ghost descended upon him in the form of a dove. And again, it showeth unto the children of men the straightness of the path and the narrowness of the gate by which they should enter, he having set the example before them. And so again, we follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because of the example that he set for us in receiving this ordinance of the baptism of water. And then as I mentioned, if we are prepared, we, after this ordinance is um, um, executed on our behalf, we can receive the baptism of fire in the Holy Ghost. Now, this is not uh, necessarily the order that it has to be uh, received. Uh, many times we read in the Book of Mormon, uh, the Lamanites received the baptism of fire in the Holy Ghost before they received the ordinance of baptism of water. And that was because of their faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who had not come as of the time that they received this ordinance, but because of their faith and because of their desire to follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they received that. Because the Lord says in 3 Nephi 9.20 that what we are to offer, excuse me, as a sacrifice is a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And if we do so with true intent, true purpose of heart, he will baptize us with fire and with the Holy Ghost. So as we continue in verse 6, which is a continuation of verse 5, it says, baptize us with the Holy Ghost. And so as we receive the baptism of fire, the baptism of the fire is the sanctification uh, process. And then, then we receive the Holy Ghost, which uh, leads and guides us. And we can take the Holy Spirit as our guide so that we are not deceived, so that we can receive instruction, so that we can be uh, as the five wise virgins who kept the oil in their lamp. And the oil in their lamp is the Holy Ghost. And they took upon them the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. And they were instructed on what they should do. And they were not re deceived. And they were able to uh, enter into the wedding of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and enter into his rest. And so the second line says, and seal us as thine own. And so this is another ascension level uh, as we um, are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, which is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then we enter into and become a member of the church of the firstborn. And we join the ransom host and we become one with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and with all those saints who have also entered into the rest of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so this hymn teaches in a very beautiful way the doctrine of Christ that as we receive the ordinance of baptism of water and then as we receive the ordinance of baptism of fire and the Holy Ghost, we enter a terrestrial order and become a member of the Church of the Lamb. And then after that, as we are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, we enter into a celestial order and become a member of the Church of the Firstborn. I love what King Benjamin taught his people in Mosiah um, in chapters three and chapters uh, four and five, and how he, after he taught his people, uh, he looked around and he saw that his people had fallen to the ground and they recognized that they were less than the dust of the earth. And because of that, 
they all exclaim with one voice, Oh, have mercy and apply the atoning blood of Christ that we might receive a remission of our sins. And at that time, they were baptized with fire and with the Holy Ghost. They received a remission of their sins and they became members of the church of Christ and entered into a terrestrial order. And they continued and they said that they had recognized that they had been changed, that their natures had been changed, that they had no more disposition to do evil, but to do good continually. And this was because of the faith that they had on the words that their king taught them about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then they said that if it were necessary, they could prophesy of all things. That is because they had received the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. And so because of that testimony of Christ, they had the ability to receive and to prophesy of all things. And so then after that, they entered into a covenant with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And because of the covenant that they entered into to follow Christ for the remainder of their days, they became sons and daughters of Christ. And so King Benjamin was very pleased that their people had recognized our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and recognized the importance of entering a covenant with them. But then after that, he says to them that they should continue steadfast and be immovable. And so in Mosiah 5, verse 15, it says the following, Therefore, I would that ye should be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in good works, that Christ, the Lord God omnipotent, may seal you his, that you may be brought to heaven, that ye may have everlasting salvation and eternal life through the wisdom and power and justice and mercy of him who created all things in heaven and in earth, who is God above all. Amen. And so this hymn, in a very powerful way, teaches us the doctrine of Christ, helps us to understand it. And again, the music is what really helps to seal this into our very beings and helps to make these words part of who we are. So I hope that you will come to believe as I do how powerful the hymns can be and how they can help us to overcome the challenges that we have in life, how it can help us to remain connected to our Father in heaven and to receive the instruction that we need to be able to ascend and to receive all the blessings that our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have for each and every one of us.